My name is Barbara, the Barbara Woodward Carlton. My mother had dementia, and I should add that I have recently had a diagnosis. I have vascular dementia, my mother had Alzheimer's. I am Ulati, and my wife was diagnosed in the late 60s. I've been involved in research over 27 years. I am very curious about what is the medicine available, what are the care services available at home, at their care homes, so I can share my experience. Well, I'm Eric Deason from Birmingham. Well, I was first diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's. I probably started in dementia research about 10 years ago. Hi, I'm Sophie Horrocks. What we do as designers really is to bring people with lived experience into the development process at the very early stages to make sure that any solution that's being developed has the best possible potential for adoption and impact. My name is Neil Grossman. What we are trying to do is essentially trying to correct this abnormal activity of the brain in a non-invasive way. And so we use weak electric field that applied by electrode that we position on the scalp. And the workshop that we are doing today is essentially a starting of a process to trying to identify how the hardware manifestation of our tool can be done at home. Today's workshop is thinking about what the device might look like in the future and so they're actually co-designing and co-producing what the technology will look like. So we've developed a range of really early stage prototypes just to start engaging and involving people into the design. We try, started to ask them, okay, what are the benefits you would like to see? How are you going to use it? What will be the concerns you will have? And where do you see what will be the opportunities? I came to the meeting and I thought, wow, gosh, this is so good. We were asked for our views, for our experience, for our opinions. Sometimes it's something they haven't quite thought of, or they say, yeah, we're trying to get that across. So it is a kind of dialogue between them and us. They've been asking us how we would feel about the different kinds of headsets that they might use. They're certainly trying to see how people would feel about it, which is not always the case in research. A big part of the process itself has been thinking about how we can engage and involve a really diverse range of people in the research process itself. So we've made sure that every involvement activity that we run is both online and in person to make sure that people can be involved no matter where their location or what their access needs. One thing that we've really tried to do is partner with a really wide range of community groups and organisations to make sure that we're reaching people through trusted networks. One of the key things that we uh, discover during this process that the only way for this therapy will be used is if we can do it at home. And that was, that was a really big shift because we, we never planned for that. My involvement in research means to me that I am valued. I think I'm doing some good in the world. I just think it's, yeah, huge potential. Everyone that has this kind of experience will say, I know I know it, but I can't access it. And I know often the nouns I can't get and the names, and I know they're there. So if I know as a person with that, that they're there, then I believe the people doing the research can actually find out which bit of the brain to deal with to perhaps liven it up. It is so exciting proving their brain to get to the disease area is, to me, fantastic. Almost like a science fiction. But do we bring it to the reality? <laughs>